All right, guys, welcome back to another uh, voiceover breakdown. Today we're going to be looking at a modified Imanari roll from the Reverse Delaheva and Nogi. Uh, a pretty cool way to sort of roll into the saddle and something that tends to look more complicated than it really is, in my opinion. Like anything, it's going to take practice, but it might not be as hard as it uh, initially seems by looking at the video. But So let's go ahead and, uh, and take a look at this first slide. What I'm sort of highlighting in this slide is just that this is kind of more available to me when my opponent decides with his outside right base leg. If he brings it a little closer to me and it comes within my reach, I really like to take advantage of that and start to scoop underneath it. Um, because even if this doesn't work, we have other options that we could go do something like a modified X guard uh, sweeps and that sort of thing. So whenever I see that outside base leg start to get close, um, your opponent's kind of making a bit of a, a mistake here and giving us an opportunity, so we're, we're going to capitalize on it, okay? So I'll just roll it through here and, uh, and continue on. So here's where I talk about building frames, okay? So a good place to probably start is to just take a second to, to explain kind of what reverse Delaheva is and what its main function is. And it's designed to basically stop your opponent from knee cut passing you easily, okay? So what I try to do is take my left inside leg and I'm gonna lace it kind of like a snake around the back of his hamstring and my instep of my left leg is gonna try to wrap around his thigh. It's not the most natural knee movement, but it really laces around in a way that sort of limits the mobility of his knee, okay? So you can kind of see here that his knee is resting on my thigh. And the function of this hook is to prevent him from easily being able to drive his knee to the mat. Because once his knee gets to the mat, I'm, I'm, you know, in a lot of trouble, okay? The other thing that I have here to act as a barrier is my right foot. So I put the toes of my right foot in his hip, and that's sort of an initial barrier that helps me gauge the distance and gives me a bit of an opportunity to push him away so that he can't just easily start to pressure into me. So those two are the two most basic elements, but it's not enough to just do that and expect a good passer to be neutralized. What I like to try to do is frame with my arms as well. You'll notice I'm in this instance, I'm only just demonstrating with my right arm because I'm preparing to sort of invert here. But a lot of times I'll use both arms, one my right arm up by his opposite shoulder, and I may use my left arm to sort of cup around his bicep so he can't cross face me. The other thing that I sometimes do with my left arm is use it to grab around his ankle, okay? So if my opponent starts to stand up and disengage, I like to keep that ankle grip so that he can't just necessarily kick out of reverse Delaheba. But for this for this application, we're, we're looking at you know, an attack here. So my left arm now is is scooping under his thigh, okay? But these frames initially are really important because reverse Delaheva, you know, it's not a position that you can really just relax in because you're gonna be getting a lot of pressure. Like this is this tends to be something that people do. Knee cut passing can be awful to defend. And so you really have to build your frames and be very wary of them making chest-to-chest -chest contact and be very wary of them getting a cross face on you because that will shut everything down, okay? So my opponent here, I've created some space and creating space is critical to launching your attacks from reverse Delahiva, okay? So I'm not just, I don't mean to just brush by building frames because that's such a critical part of it, okay? So I've got my toes in his hip, I've got my uh, hand on his shoulder, I've got my Delaheva hook, and now you can see, I'm just going to stop it here. You can see that I, I kick away here, okay? And that's super important. I need to get my opponent moving a bit uh, vertically and backwards, okay? So you can see as I begin my inversion how much space I've created, okay? You can execute this with less space, but you really have to be very flexible and be able to invert incredibly easily, which I can't do. I tend to have tight hips and a tight lower back. And so for me to invert, I need a lot of space. So I kick off and push pretty explosively so that I can generate a, a more significant reaction from my opponent, okay? So you'll see here, I begin to create space and I go for what's called a two-on-one grip 
on my opponent's right leg, okay? That is basically, you're gonna notice that I'm gonna, with my right arm, I'm gonna scoop around his calf, and my left arm is sort of scooping behind the web of his knee, okay? And in no-gi scenarios, I find two-on-one grips far more, uh, they're superior to single grips because we don't have fabric to grab onto with a single hand. So when we can double up on a grip, I find it just tends to secure it a lot better. So that's what I'm seeking to do initially, okay? The other, the other point that's critical here is as I start to invert, is that my head stays to the inside of his leg the whole time, okay? So as we move to this next side that says head position and grip, okay? You'll notice that my head is rotating in between his legs. My head is not to the outside of his right ankle, okay? If my head's to the outside of his right ankle, you're not gonna end up in the saddle. You're probably gonna hit your head on their leg and you may fall into something a little different, more of like a 50-50. I, I try to always tuck my head underneath because it'll make the inversion easy and it gets you to where you want to go, okay? So you'll notice that with that two-on-one grip as well, I'm pulling it to my chest, okay? So like anything in no-gi, taking away space is important, tight two-on-one grips, okay? So as I'm inverting, you see me rolling, I've got that two-on-one grip, pulling it tight to my chest, and as we roll through here, secure the inside triangle. Okay, so a lot of this is happening quickly. I'm trying to break it down and, and slow it down so you can see. But as I continue to rotate, notice that I'm triangling my legs kind of around the height of my inversion or the peak of my inversion, okay? That right there, I'm in the saddle right now, okay? So he's gonna eventually fall to his hip, but in this moment right here, I effectively have the saddle. But it's super important to secure this before you fall, okay? Because you don't wanna, you want to take advantage of your opponent being off balance as much as possible. Once we hit the ground, he, a skilled leg locker is immediately going to try to start to escape, okay? So we keep everything tight with our two-on-one grip. We've locked that inside triangle, and now we hit the ground. And what I like about this setup is it's a little different from the traditional sort of Imanari roll, where a lot of people tend to just focus on the, on the leg that they're attacking. And what I like about this setup is that it gets us into something I guess you could call double trouble, as the Danaher people call it, which is effectively just having both legs trapped, okay? And what I especially like about this is that it's a, the, the secondary leg, the one I'm not attacking, his left leg is all the way across my body, okay? So for him to start to kick out and rotate and escape, when his leg is laced over on that side of my body, he's got to kick it out all the way to the opposite side to start to really defend this. So what I look to do is before I attack, I establish control, okay? So what, what does that mean? I look to really get a nice solid grip on his secondary leg, I pull it across my body and I hold it, okay? And you'll notice with my left hand, the grip is in front of his knee, okay? So I like that grip because when people go to retract their knee, I find getting right in front of their kneecap and pulling makes it incredibly difficult. If I were to just grab his ankle, he has way more hip mobility and he's much stronger there, okay? So by cupping in front of the knee, it really helps me solidify uh, that position and take away some of the strength from his hip flexor, okay? So you notice I've locked that in place. And the other thing that's super important before you attack the heel hook is creating a bend in the primary leg, okay? So you can see his right leg that's trapped. Notice how it's bent across my body now. In order to get a really nasty heel hook that goes right directly to the knee and the knee ligaments, having a bend in the knee is really important, okay? So I'm establishing all of these things before I even attack the heel hook, okay? So we'll keep it rolling along here. Uh, I go really easy here because it, it's such a deep heel hook and the bend in the knee that you don't need much to finish it. And I don't, my partner kind of had some sore knees. So I wasn't looking to really demonstrate like a, a fully locked in gable gripped heel hook here. But the finishing details still apply, okay? Even if I was gonna gable grip my hands or get a butterfly grip or, or whatever your preferred heel hook and grip is, I always try to flare their their toes into my armpit or the bicep to really expose the heel, okay? So 
I've put the toes in my, my armpit there. You'll see his heel just becomes a nice big target for me to get a, a nice deep wrist grip around, okay? And I pull the heel into my body. It's not enough to just, you know, nothing magic's gonna happen if you just sort of wrap your wrist around the grip. I'm gonna pull it tight into my body. I'm gonna eliminate any slack. I wanna feel tension in the knee and in the ankle before I even engage my hips, okay? So I'm pulling this tightly to my body and I'm going to try to pull it towards my face as I engage my hips up, okay? I never want to just like start to rotate to my left really hard because I'm helping him escape by doing that. So what I look to do is isolate this position and really think about causing the braking pressure by driving your hips, okay? So I'm pulling this nice and tight into my body towards my face and I'm going to engage my hips up and it becomes incredibly powerful very, very quickly, okay? So my opponent's tapping uh, and I'm barely doing anything there, okay? I'm gonna go through this next roll a little faster here, okay? And this, this uh, angle is really important. So in order to get that double trouble position, okay? Instead of just rolling through with this Iminari roll and just ending up with double control on one leg, I'm starting to shoot my, uh, my left arm through and capturing behind his knee with a scoop grip, okay? So what that does is it helps control his fall and it also gets me control of his secondary leg before we hit the mat, okay? It's also helping to lace that secondary leg across his body by the time we hit the ground. Okay, so you'll notice that I'm, it's not just an arbitrary grip. I like to always scoop behind the knee and try to even get in the web and the tendons of the knee. It's like a natural grip that you can use to control your opponent, okay? So as we fall here, you'll see that I've trapped it. And notice when we stop here and we fall, it's already on the other side of my body and I've already controlled it, hand in front of the knee. I pull it across the body. I scoop that heel, I engage the hips and we get the tap, okay? So again, just one last point on securing the heel here. Don't release that secondary leg until you get a bite on the heel of the primary leg, okay? What do I mean by that? Don't just say, okay, his leg's on the other side of my body, let's go two hands to the heel right away. Because a good, again, a skilled opponent, as soon as you let go of their secondary leg, they're gonna start kicking out, they're gonna start rotating, and you're gonna probably lose the position. So you've worked hard to get here, solidify everything before you start to attack the heel. So what I'll often do in this position is keep my left arm on, his, uh, on the secondary leg to secure it so he can't escape, and I'll take my right arm and start to get a nice deep bite on the heel, flaring it in my armpit, creating exposure, getting a bend in the knee. Now I can almost finish it with one hand, let alone if I put you know, a gable grip on that secondary hand and really drive my hips through. Super powerful, super dangerous. And uh, you know, those little details against better people are gonna make a huge difference, okay? So that's basically a look at it. Um, I hope you enjoy this clip. If you like these videos and the voiceovers, please subscribe, like, share. Uh, please leave a comment. If you like the videos, any suggestions, things you wanna see, uh, I'd be happy to accommodate any requests. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.